Hi, everybody. I'm Gage Krumbach, and I am an intern at Red Hat. I work in the Forward Deployed Engineering Group, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about stateful sessions for intelligent applications. And here we're going to be using OpenShift to power a multi-user model service and a Kappa architecture. Okay, so first we need to talk about statefulness. Statefulness in an application is something you've probably seen before, and that's something like data being stored, data being saved for future visits. So if you go to Amazon or any kind of e-commerce site, you're gonna have a shopping cart. You put an item, come back maybe a day or two later, that item's still gonna be in there. That's statefulness, and I mean we use that for usernames and passwords, e-commerce sites, and everything. Now. In an API, this is a little bit different. It's a little bit more short term. It's more of a session than an actual day to day thing. So we're going to have, we're looking at a time frame between like five, 10 minutes instead of anywhere between days and months or whatever. So in an API, the data needs, needs to be stored for persistent interaction, interaction. So past data is going to be needed for that future data. And that's not always the case, but a lot of times that's why you might need statefulness in an API. And to look at why we and to look at why we might actually need a, a stateful API, we can look at this example for a puzzle builder. Now the puzzle builder is a API. It has a board inside the API. And on the right, we have puzzle pieces. We want to post these puzzle pieces over to the puzzle builder API. And then we want the API to correctly place these puzzle pieces on its board. So we start, we're going to start without a state. So we're not storing any state inside this API yet. Now we can see it successfully puts a piece in and it successfully puts another piece in, but it doesn't save the state. So we're never going to be able to actually save the entire puzzle. Now, in contrast, if we have state, we're saving the state of the board inside the API. We're able to put all four puzzle pieces in and complete the actual set. Now we can do a little special data, manip data manipulation here with serializing it out to a database. Now, the pros of this is so we don't have to keep state inside the puzzle builder API. This makes it a lot more restless and we can just, we can make this a lot more restful and scale it and have a lot of other fun features with restful APIs. Now, the issue is we can only serialize data that we're able to serialize. If our data is not easily serializable, like we're working with third party tools or there's just some objects that it's not worth doing or maybe we're on maybe we're trying to do live, um, some sort of live encoding or decoding, then we don't wanna spend time pushing up to a database. So a lot of reasons why we might wanna keep the state inside the API. And that comes with a lot of difficulties. So now you have to start storing the state inside the API you have to manage it. If there's multiple users, it's gonna manage multiple different states. And then those two things up there will go hand in hand with scaling. And it's not easy to scale a stateful API right out of the box. Now, to further look at why we can't do that, I'm gonna introduce this real-time call center management use case. And here we're working as, so imagine you're working as a call center manager and you need to monitor multiple conversations for quality assurance. So say there's like 10, 15, or like 100 call lines. And you need to make sure that each call line is either good, bad, if there's some common problems you need to be aware of this and you don't want to keep spot checking each one. So there's a couple ways you can look at these as a whole. One of them would be listening to each one at the same time. It sounds something like this. You can kind of pick out a little bit, but maybe not enough. And it's probably not the best way to do it. And Another way to do it would be using machine learning and having a whole model service and data flow that actually transcribes this audio and then puts it through some natural language processing, which sorts and groups these uh, live audio calls together. And then you can go in with a web application and manage them from there. And to do this, it's not too bad. You just need a couple things. We're going to use OpenShift to deploy three, uh, three services two model services and a web application. The first one is our, uh, our first model service is this audio decoding API. And it's going to decode audio coming in from the phone lines on the left. So the phone lines are gonna uh, call this API, post some audio chunks to it live, and it's gonna store the state of 
this audio in the container. And the reason it needs to store state is because audio decoding, at least live audio decoding, is going to need pass state to actually decode. It's going to need pass state to actually decode properly. If you don't have pass state, then it's just looking at small audio chunks. And the sentiment analysis model is going to take these uh, decoded texts. You're going to have a bunch of text from the phone lines. And it's going to group them based on if they're good or bad or if they are or if they have some common issues so we can extract the nouns or verbs or whatever. And then we also need a web application to manage all this. Now, the issue is we have all these in OpenShift and they're running just fine, except we need to connect them somehow. And to do this, we're going to use Kafka. Now, Open Data Hub, this is a, uh, uh, the Open Data Hub is like a group of data, uh, a group of machine learning uh, tools. And Open Data Hub utilizes upstream efforts. And one of these upstream efforts is Kafka or Strimzy. And we're going to use this to connect all of our um, connect all of our services together. So through through OpenShift, we're going to deploy Kafka. And if you are not familiar with Kafka, you can sort of think of it as data streaming, or one of its use cases is data streaming. So if we have service A and then we have service B on the right, we want to take data from service A and put it in service B. Service A can produce data, use Kafka produce, and Producing it puts this data onto a stream a or a Kafka topic, a stream of data. So this is a one-way stream of data where we could have multiple services or one service putting everything onto this stream. And then service B can be on the other end of the stream and it can pick up, it can consume data from that stream. So it's going to look at the Kafka topic and consume off of it. And you can have multiple Kafka topics and they all, they're all independent of each other. So now we're going to use this to tie together our solution. So we have our data from our audio, we have our data from our phone lines going into the decoder. And decoder is going to have this text. This text is going to be produced over to the decoding speech topic. And from there, our model service is going to consume and produce its um, analysis onto this sentiment text. So now we're going to have this little object of our sentence and our uh, our sentiment analysis, or maybe some more uh, natural language processing analysis. And that can be all consumed by our web application. Now, this flow, this architecture is what's called a COPPA architecture, where data is coming in through one source, and it's flowing through a bunch of services to get to an end source. Now, the issue is if we start adding more phone lines, because obviously we're going to want more than four phone lines, it's going to increase the load on our API. And once we have a larger load on this API, it's going to start to not be able to produce real-time predictions anymore because it's going to have to wait for each prediction to be done. And then it's no longer going to be live. And it's going to sort of defeat the purpose of our whole project here is to look at our phone lines live instead of just recordings of them. So the obvious solution would be, well, we should just scale this decoding API, right? Now, that doesn't work all that well. But first, we need to introduce a couple things here in OpenShift. Now, OpenShift has an auto scaler, which will automatically scale your API based on CPU usage. So because we have more phone lines, it's going to start to scale the API a lot more. And now we might have tens or even hundreds of APIs. And our ingress controller on the left, it's one of its main uh, uses is to take external traffic, which is our phone lines, and then route them to um, internal services such as our API. So a phone line is going to push, it's going to call our API and our ingress controller is going to intercept that and then put it in one of the APIs. Now, the issue why we can't scale here is because the ingress controller doesn't always put it, doesn't always send our phone lines to the same containers. So for example, if I'm talking in one phone line and I'm going to API one, and that's fine, I have a state there, but all of a sudden I continue talking but the English controller now will put me in state in API two. So now I have two states and the second state doesn't know anything from the past. So it's going to have a different prediction and the state one is going to have a different prediction and they're going to try to combine each other and it's not going to work well. So we want to have, we want our phone lines to be linked to these audio decoding APIs, the same container. So a phone line to a decoder. And 
a really cool solution for this is OpenShift sticky sessions. And sticky sessions are an easier way to deal with this scaling issue here. And sticky sessions, they use cookies for session persistence. And that sort of works because cookies are going to be linked to the container. And cookies are generated in the ingress controller. Now, if we look at this, how it all will work in our flow here, we have a phone line makes a request to the OpenShift autoscaler. Now that's going to be intercepted by um, the phone line is going to make a request to the audio decoding API, and it's going to be intercepted by the ingress controller. Ingress controller is going to generate a cookie. Now this cookie is going to be linked to this container that it called. So it's going to, and then it's going to send that cookie back on the response that the API gives. So the phone line is going to receive its response and a cookie. And this cookie is a link between itself and the container. Now, originally, right now, we're choosing to ignore this cookie and we're going to send another response well, to give us a different API and over and over again, which will mess up our system. Now, if we just start saving our cookies inside our client, our phone line, then when we make a request, we're going to send the cookie with it and the ingress controller remembers that cookie. And the, so then once, because it remembers the cookies, it remembers which container to go to and it's going to send it to that container. So now our phone lines are going to be linked to a container. So we're no longer losing state. Our state's always going to be linked together. Now, if we actually put this into our solution, where we have our, our phone lines on the left with cookies, our English controller is going to map these cookies to the container, and everything works in unison now, which is pretty cool. And it, all it really required was our was the client to be saving cookies. And I mean, that can be done a lot of different ways. I did it in Python, and all I really had to do was change a couple lines of code to just say, hey, start saving cookies, and then it just, it just starts working. OpenShift's ingress controller manages the rest. So now we're going to look to see what this actually looks like in OpenShift. I think you guys can see this. Yes. Um, so we have all our parts in here. If we look, we have our call simulator. Now, this is just going to represent all of our phone lines. And this is going to represent all of our phone lines. Yep. And the audio decoder is going to call all of the, it's going to take all the call simulators um, calls. This is our API. And then we need our minimal notebook. Now this is, this is going to be our, this is our uh, sentiment analysis model. Yes. And it's not a service right now because we're in development. So we want to be running it in a Jupyter notebook so we can further develop it more. Well, first let's just spin up some of these simulators let's put up like i don't know four five six it's going to spin up quite quickly and then it's going to go to audio decoder we can say we want another pod for our say it's a little bit too much for our decoders to handle so let's get another one going and now let's go over here and start developing our our model uh yep we got to go to the route this takes us here to jupiter hub now we can there we go so now you can see we're using, we're just installing a little bit of some, we're installing Kafka because we're going to have to produce and consume. And then we're also going to install some Flare and LTK to do some sentiment analysis and download some pre-trained models just for testing purposes. And we're going to set up Kafka right here. So Kafka is going to have a from topic and a to topic. Remember in our diagram, it was the to topic that went to the, because um, it's consuming and it's producing. So we need both. We set up our consumer and producer. And all we really need to do is iterate over this consumer and this, and then we can just grab each data piece from the stream of data. We do some sentiment analysis. We take out the nouns from our sentence and we package it up in this little object with an identification number. And then we produce it and we just send it out on that topic, which is where our uh, consumer, our, our web application will pick it up. So if we just do a quick run here, it's going to start pushing out a bunch of sentences. Now, we're going to go over to our web application, which is just this Node app right here. And you see it's going to start coming in in real time. Now, it might not seem like the quickest right now, and that's not because of our API. That's because we're using Jupyter Notebooks here, and it's being bottlenecked by the fact that this Python script can only do one at a time and to the speed of the actual notebook. But you can tell it's actually not that bad. It's still producing real-time results here and for six for six simulators it's doing pretty good 
you see that we have positive quality right here for some, we have negative quality for some, and then we have some top words being extracted, and then we have the call line ID. So, let's review what we did here to actually get to this point. We had an issue where we had statefulness, where we needed to store state in the API. We couldn't take it out because of issues with um, third-party tools with our audio decoder. Now, scaling is what we needed to do once we needed more phone lines, and that ended up being an issue because we needed state to be persistent inside the container. We didn't need it in different containers. We want everything to be linked. And to link these, we used cookies or um, OpenShift session stickiness. And with those cookies, we have a, a back and forth handshake between the ingress controller and the um, and the actual uh, phone line. And that made it so that session is persistent. And as long as the ingress controller is up and the actual container is up, everything will be working just fine. Now, this is a solution. It's a quick way to actually get statefulness up and running, but it is not going to be like the only solution. There is a lot of other solutions. And one of the solutions I was actually looking at before this was using um, OpenShift operators. And you make a custom operator or resource, and then instead of, instead of having just APIs, you have a bunch of different containers. So each, each call line has its own little pod, and it's it's a little bit more complicated, that's the issue. But there are better ways to do this, but here is it actually a really simple way to get it set up and running without actually changing a lot from your main build. It's a good proof of concept and it could actually be used in a lot of ways or a lot of different ways as well. So I think that's it. If there's any questions, I'll take them. Thanks, Gage. Uh, great talk. It, it does appear that there's one question in the chat uh, by Cassia. Uh, where ingress controller stores state all cookies? I um, wonder if you can answer that. Yes. Um, the ingress controller, where the ingress controller stores the state. Um, where it stores the state? I'm not 100% sure where it stores the state. Um, it doesn't, act, okay, the ingress controller doesn't so, store the state itself. It stores a container. It, it doesn't, it stores a link between the cookie and the container. So the state is being stored in the API still. So if we go back and we look at our first example um, uh, here, we, our, our puzzle builder API, we can think of that as that, we can think of that as our audio decoder API and these puzzle pieces as our audio chunks coming in. Now, they're actually being stored in the API itself, the actual container. So the container is storing the API. And the benefits of that is it's a little bit more quicker to like grab the state down instead of going to a database. And the fact we couldn't go to a database anyway because of the audio serializing, which is not possible. But yeah, it is just in memory inside the container. But the ingress controller doesn't store state. It stores a link between the phone line and the container, or more generally the client and the container.